I am Dr. Saeed Amman Akshawani, and this message is brought to you by the Mohsin and Fawziya Ja'far Foundation. Does Islam have spiritual teachings? Are Muslims encouraged to become more spiritual? I can't blame some people out there for asking this question because most discussions amongst Muslims tend to be legal or theological. If you go to any Muslim household and sit and listen to the discussions in the household, they tend to revolve around a number of key concepts. For example, has the moon been sighted in Ramadan? Have I broken my fast properly? Is it time to break one's fast? Have I performed the ablution for prayer in the way that it should be? Have I prayed properly? Have I done what is obligatory, what's recommended, what's prohibited? These are very legal discussions and most Muslim households do discuss law a lot to the extent that in a world when we talk about structured religion being seen negatively, many people shy away from discussions or even coming near the religion of Islam because of the legal aspects of the religion. And we have our discussion about is law vital within religious discussion and do we need law which you may refer to. So when you come to this particular area, you'll find that most Muslim households will have a legal manual at home, a legal manual that discusses purification, prayer, fasting, charity, taxes, domestic issues. Then there are Muslims who in their households will only discuss areas of theology. Does God exist? Prophets, the role of the human being in the world that they live in and on the day of judgment. Law and theology are at the helm of discussions amongst the Muslim community today. But the essence of the religion of Islam, no doubt, has a spiritual edge. On the first level, the spiritual edge can be seen in that victorious is the Muslim who is able to purify their soul. Purification of the soul is at the heart of the discussions of Islam. But you find, unfortunately, that there are certain segments of the Muslim community who completely neglect this discussion. What is the soul? What are the faculties of the soul? How do I purify my soul? What are spiritual diseases? What are spiritual ailments? Which areas in spirituality allow me to develop as a human being? There are discussions within the religion of Islam which talk of Islam and talk of Iman and talk of Ihsan, and talk of Ikhlas. But are these terms normally mentioned in Muslim households? Just because they're not, doesn't mean that Islam doesn't have a spiritual edge. Islam talks of purification of the soul. The soul has faculties such as the power of anger, and the power of imagination, and the power of reason, and the power of, for example, desire. How do I balance my reason, my anger, my imagination, my desire? How do I ensure that spiritual diseases such as envy, and lust, and hypocrisy, and anger do not affect my life? How do I ensure that my personality and my consciousness is at a level where I'm not seen as an animal, but I'm seen virtually as angelic? All of these discussions can be seen in the life of the Prophet Muhammad and peace be upon him and his family. You want to see spirituality in Islam? Look at the supplications of the prophetic household and the family of Muhammad, peace be upon him. I give you an example. If you want to see supplications, go to his son-in-law, Ali. Imam Ali السلام, has some wonderful spiritual supplications that cannot be seen by any of his generation apart from him. Supplications which are in Muslim households read on Thursday nights, in some cases Tuesday nights, in some cases Friday mornings, in some cases the month of Ramadan. These supplications continue Continue with his great grandson, Imam Ali ibn al Hussein Zain al Abidin. The prophetic household left behind some unbelievable spiritual lessons in their supplications. But even in their one liners, there are some traditions which you could see at the end of all our videos traditions which are one liners but are the best for purifying the soul, giving calmness to the soul. In a world where mental health is being discussed so much, sometimes these traditions allow us to reassess our position, our posture, both physically and spiritually, our guidance physically and spiritually, our direction physically and spiritually. Further than that, you find within the medieval period, there are many great Muslim philosophers and mystics who allow you to delve deeper into the spiritual realm, provide you with spiritual treaties in which you're able to grow and learn and educate oneself as well as educate others in the community. One looks at article on Netflix and the discussions concerning Ibn Arabi and the discussions concerning, for example, on other series done on Mullah Sadra. One only looks towards Farabi, for example, or Ibn Sina. One looks later on at other grand scholars such as Taba Taba'i and 
Faith Kashani, who give us different treaties of how one may find spirituality within the core of Islam. You find Sayyid Hussein Nasr going even deeper and looking at certain mystical teachings, as well as other schools of thought one may find where the likes of Rumi, Sa'di, Hafiz, amongst others, come to the core. And then later Iqbal goes further in understanding the philosophy of these spiritual teachings. There's so much to learn within Islamic spirituality. Thank you for listening to this weekly broadcast. We invite your feedback to continue this dialogue.